All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome in. So there's this post floating around the internet, and uh, I, I actually saw it last night, but apparently <laughs> Antonio Pierce liked a picture on Instagram hinting at a Devontae Adams trade, right? Now, this is the exact post that he liked. It was from Sports Illustrated, and uh, it was a quote from uh, Michael Fabiano, and he said, don't be surprised if Devontae Adams has already played his last snap with the Raiders. And then Pierce liked it, and then uh, Fabiano like reposted that Pierce liked it, which is kind of how it uh, blew up. And so, you know, you're looking at the situation, right? The trade deadline is in, I want to say, a month. Um, it, it's actually later into the season this year compared to uh, previous years. And Devontae Adams is currently week to week with a hamstring injury, and the hamstring injury kind of came out of nowhere. The Raiders are they're in a bit of a weird situation. I love the Raiders. I love the Raiders fans. Um, I, th I think they're some of the best in football. Just thinking back to those those four like four oh five four twenty five kickoffs in Oakland, and like the entire crowd is just wearing black. Like it, it, it that was such a sick atmosphere. Um, loved it just you know from a like from an outsider's perspective i thought it was so cool but anyway the raiders recently lost a game and antonio pierce said hey you know there's there's players making uh business uh business decisions i'm going to do the same essentially and from that point you know Devonte adams kind of just came up with this hamstring injury um you know so I, i'm not sure if those two things are linked together you know it doesn't really feel as though there's been any sort of signs that Devontae wants to leave the Raiders. It doesn't really feel like there's any signs that the Raiders want to move off of Adams. It really seems like it's a media driven point, right? Because we haven't gotten reports that the Raiders are shopping Devontae. We, we've actually gotten the opposite. Raiders general manager Tom Telesco is shutting teams down and, and other teams don't even have a chance to offer a deal because Telesco is like, no, we're not trading him. Like, like, they don't even have the point in the conversation where it reaches that far because the Raiders have already shut it down. So, you know, look, it's too early to tell if Devontae Adams will get traded or not. Um, I think really what it comes down to is the win-loss record. The win-loss record for the Raiders. What is it going to be at the trade deadline? Um, they're 2-2 two and two right now, like, same as the New York Jets. And they're coming off a pretty big win against the Cleveland Browns team where they didn't have Devontae Adams. They didn't have Max Crosby. And now this week they play against the team that just beat the Jets and the Denver Broncos. You know, that that's a... You know, obviously, the Chiefs are undefeated, but this is a massive game because the Chargers have dropped a couple games. You know, all of a sudden, we could see the Raiders, you know, in the mix, second place, potentially. And I think it would be an absolutely terrible look if the Raiders are above 500 or even at 500 by the trade deadline and then they trade Devonte adams away uh i i think it's it's just such a unless of course they get this insane offer um but i i just don't know how good of a look that would be you know or or what message that would send to not only just the locker room but the you know fan base Unless, of course, there there is some sort of uh, thing happening behind the scenes that just, you know, the public doesn't know about uh, with this whole Devontae Adams thing. But, you know, you got to imagine if the Raiders kind of wanted to trade him, they would at least let teams offer. But, again, you know, it, it, until we get to the trade deadline, we don't know what the Raiders are going to do. Are they going to be buyers? Are they going to be sellers? Are they going to just stand pat? Now, when you look at the Raiders, right, a team that doesn't really have the long-term option at the quarterback position, I like Aiden O'Connell, but, you know, I, I'm not going to say he's a franchise quarterback. I haven't seen that. Could the Raiders move off of a guy who is over 30 years old, who's owed a ton of money, uh, you know, big contract, if he were to stick with the Raiders, you know, trade him away, again, save this money, add a bunch of assets to where now you're looking ahead in, you know, to the NFL draft, and now you can use these extra draft assets to potentially shoot up to the top of the draft to go, you know, select your quarterback of choice. I could see that potentially happening. You know, I, I think the Raiders, th there's been rumors with the Raiders wanting quarterbacks in the last couple of drafts, right? CJ Stroud, last season, it really seemed like they uh, were interested in Jaden Daniels. And both quarterbacks look to be pretty good, uh, you know, up to this point in both CJ and, and Jaden. So, you know, if you are a Raider fan, I, I could see that, you know, that uh, that want or that desire.
you know, hey, look at these young quarterbacks. The guys that we are targeting are doing really, really well. We want some of that, right? We want, you know, again, take your pick, a Shadur Sanders or whoever. Um, so, you know, again, I, I think only time will tell here on what the Raiders are exactly going to do. But you got to imagine that the New York Jets are going to be front and center in line for Devontae Adams. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not really 100% sure how the Jets are going to be able to afford Devontae Adams. But, uh, you know, an underlying storyline here, which is very, very, very important, is Hassan Reddick. And I'm not necessarily saying re-signing Hassan Reddick or, you know, something like that. If Hassan Reddick shows up, not only is he not getting fined anymore, but now the Jets have to pay him money. Right, or the Jets have to pay him what he's owed. He can technically do a hold in, um, which is where you know he's at the facility, he's showing up, but he's not good enough to go. And we've seen that over and over and over and over again from multiple players. Um, so, you know, we're looking at a Jets team right now that's bringing in guys. We, we signed Connor McGovern to the practice squad. We signed Jalen Mills to the practice squad, albeit smaller contracts for sure. But going into the year, the Jets only had around $7 million in available cap space for this season. Not including these, you know, these smaller contracts. I'm not really sure how the money would work to add a Devontae Adams and Hassan Reddick shows up. Now, will Reddick show up? We have no idea. It's looking pretty unlikely at this point. I think Reddick will show up eventually towards the end of the season, so that way his rights won't be controlled by the Jets. Um, but until then, uh, yeah, it's really just a waiting game. Really just a waiting game here. And also, too, I, I think the Jets have got to figure out you know, how to maybe use some of their own guys more effectively. It, we can't just be so reliant on, you know, Aaron Rodgers take us to the promised land, Devontae Adams. Like, look, if Devontae Adams is a Jet, of course, I'm going to be ex going to be totally ex excited and, and ecstatic. But, you know, we're looking at the current roster, and it's, it's safe to say that literally every offensive weapon has not been where we need them to be, maybe outside of Braylon Allen, right? Garrett Wilson is 41st in receiving yards. Brees Hall is 30th in rushing yards. Starting slot receiver Xavier Gibson has 22 receiving yards, 22. Corley has seen two snaps of offensive football, two snaps of offensive football. So, you know, it's, I, I think we have some talent in house here. Of course, I'm not going to, you know, turn away from Devontae Adams trade, but ideally, right, I, I would like to see the Jets, you know, maybe get some of their, figure out ways to get some of their, uh, some some of their talented players the ball um, within these next couple of weeks, because Garrett Wilson should not be ranked in the 40s in receiving yards through the first quarter of the season. He's way too good for that. Way too good for that. Brees Hall is one of the best backs in, in, in football. How is he 30th in rushing yards, right? Whether it's coaching, whether it's the players, whether it's a combination of both, um, you know, we got to figure it out here. And we got to start winning some football games. Losing like that to the Denver Broncos is flat out unacceptable. 10-9 in that fashion. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. So, yeah, we'll see how it plays out. Anyway, let me know your thoughts down below. And as always, go Jets.